Okay, so this is Ringwalk Media in association with Well Life Therapy. We've got one of the main men, Des Sunny. It's great to see you, and what a busy week in Telford we've got. What a busy week, what a fantastic week. Great to see you as well. Um, thank you for noticing that I am somewhat busy. I'm trying, I'm trying out here. We got had the press conference today, good fun. I didn't actually need to do much for Liam Davis and Jason Cunningham. I just asked them one question and then they just back and forth. I think I was... Uh, so you're chuckling. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you can't not laugh at some of the stuff. Like Liam Davis saying that Jason Cunningham sent him a private message saying he's going to smash his head in and Liam Davis took that personally. Like, I, I love that stuff. It's, it's, been a, it's been fun build up. I think there's been more than one message, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there has been. I, I want to get hold of these DMs at some point. Listen, it is a really good fight. And obviously, you know, Liam, home, hometown again. He boxed last time in Telford. Um, but Jason's got it all on the line. And, you know, it's his make or break for him. But that's every fight. Every fight Jason Cunningham has seems to be make or break. And people seem to write him off. And they say, this is the last one for Jason. If he doesn't win this, he's finished. And then he wins. And that, that's what tends to happen. So... Uh, He's being written off by many in this fight. Um, he's an underdog, a sizable underdog heading into it, away from home, enemy territory, but he loves it. And uh, there's a reason he's got the tattoo that he's got on his chest, the underdog that never lost hope. And uh, I don't think he's lost any hope. I think he believes he will be beating Liam Davis on Saturday and walking away with four belts. I think he's got a little bit of an extra sort of motivation because he really likes that Lonsdale belt. He does like the Lonsdale belt. He wasn't here today, but I, I understand it's going to be here tomorrow. And look, he never lost those belts in the ring, right? He never lost the British, never lost the European in the ring. So he's looking over at them, and he thinks they're his. And he thinks they're going to go back to Doncaster with him on Saturday. So uh, let's see. Liam Davis will have an awful lot to say about that. An awful lot to say about it. And um, for Liam Davis, it could be a bit of a, a breakout fight as well. And I don't think he gets enough credit for his wins so far for how far he's come in so few fights. English champion, British champion, European champion. Uh, he's got some international titles as well. Beat Mark Leach, who was on a tremendous run of form. Um, he's a hard, hard person to beat. Like, when you see someone take a fight with Mark Leach, you just kind of think, why have you taken that? That's, that's a hard night. But he beat him. He beat Baluta as well. And uh, he, he's looking the part right now. If he could beat Jason Cunningham, it's another big statement. And I think he's, he's cultivated quite a following here in Telford. They're really getting behind him. I think wins over the likes of Jason Cunningham, a couple more, a bit of a rivalry building with Dennis McCann as well. Uh, I think he's starting to get the, the attention outside of Telford too. That'd be a nice fight, Dennis McCann and uh, Liam Davies for a world title. Uh, yeah, it'll be nice, and I think it'll be quite nasty as well. I mean, uh, very nasty. Very nasty. Dennis McCann will be tomorrow with me tomorrow for the for the weigh-in. We'll be having a chat. We'll be seeing who he thinks is going to win, and if he fancies the winner. But he's got uh, he's got his own fight coming up. Yonuk Baluta, August eighteenth, and people are looking at that as a huge step up for Dennis McCann. So uh, he'll be looking to make a statement as well. It's it's such a great time to be a super bantamweight in this country. And another fight on the cards, James Moorcroft. You know, that's a big fight for him. English mandatory, and he's jumped now to the European. You know, if he wins that fight, you know, he could be top 10 European. And he could win the fight, by the way. Even, even James is um, it's his second fight at welterweight. James Moorcroft's been at the weight longer. James Moorcroft will come rough and ready with power, with momentum, coming off a tremendous win over Nathan Bennett, where he upset the odds. He's a big welterweight as well, James. Big welterweight. We saw that today. I think we'll see that tomorrow as well. Well, I do think Ethan James is, is going to grow into a very big welterweight himself. Um, a very, very intriguing fight. It's that, that whole white-collar uh, background versus amateur background. Does it make any difference at all? We'll find out. I think the Anthony Crawler influence may well make the difference in that fight. Okay, maybe so. He's, uh, I think he's been with Crawler for a couple of years now, three years now. And um, you know, he says he's never felt like in a team more than he has alongside Anthony Crawler and the camp they've got over there. A an exciting young trainer coming through. It's good to see when you know when uh, an ex fighter becomes a trainer and they're, they're coming along to press conferences. And you know, what what great fighter and great guy Anthony Crawler was, by the way. And it's, it's good to have him around. And let's see if uh, any of his influence is uh, enough to get James Moorcroft over the line. Listen, it's a cracking weekend ahead. We can't let you go without talking about a couple of other fights. Uh, Mr. Dubois, Mr. Usyk. Now, that's an intriguing fight. So many people have written off Daniel Dubois. 
personally, although we're supposed to be mutual, I think Daniel Dubois has a very, very good chance of beating Usyk. I think he has as well. Look, uh, he's got a 90% knockout rate. He is one of the heaviest hitters in the heavyweight division. He's got a guy in front of him who's 11 years older than him and naturally smaller than him, who has only boxed four times in the last four years. Daniel Dubois is the more active fighter. He's the bigger fighter. He's the heaviest hitter that Usyk will have faced, I believe. I believe Dubois hits harder than Joshua. Um, that's just my thoughts on it. But let's, let's see. I think there's plenty going for Daniel Dubois in that fight. I think he's got a chance if he sticks it on him early. And I think he's going to box the way that people wanted Anthony Joshua to box. Which is straight in there early. Straight in there. Look, it's, it's very easy for us to say, just stick it on him. But that's what Dubois actually does. Like, and, and then he ices people. Like, he actually does that. It's uh, Punches hard. Punches hard. And we're, we're not getting him to... It's not like he has to do anything that he's not used to. He doesn't have to, have to act out of character. He just needs to be the best Daniel Dubois. Trust himself. Be fearless in the exchanges. Maybe with a bit of luck as well, a bit of father time, Usyk 36 as well, maybe he can get it done. That would be an interesting result if Daniel Dubois wins. Where does he go? I mean, Fury's going to be running, I'd imagine, from that straight to the ring with him. Yeah, I mean, look, that would be a, an in-house undisputed fight for, for Queensbury in the heavyweight division. It was, it's quite a scenario. And Frank would like that. It may well play out. It may well play out. Let's see. Listen, and of course, Joe Joyce and Zhang back in the ring again, eye for an eye. Um, what do you think? How would you make of this fight? Because it's definitely make or break for Joe with this fight. Yeah, it is make or break for Joe Joyce. He um, did he underestimate Zhang? Maybe a little bit in the first fight, and uh, he, he's always been a guy that takes risks, takes hard fights, and he took one that was maybe a risk too far in Zile Zhang. Uh, I think Do you think he was forced into taking that risk because of the shenanigans going on in the heavyweight division? No, he just he needs to take good fights um, and he needs to be active because you, d you don't want to then have your shot at Usyk and you've gone into it with, with no momentum at all. He, he needs that and he was building up a, a brilliant head of steam, you know, the Joseph Parker fight, that win as well. And, and yeah, look, he just came unstuck against Zhang. He thinks he's got enough to correct his mistakes from the first fight. We'll find out. You think that if he does come through that fight with Zhang, that he gets the winner of Dubois and uh, Usyk, possibly? I think, look, he will be the WBO mandatory again, uh, which puts him in the queue for a shot at the winner. I think the IBF is meant to be next, but yeah, who knows? Listen. It's going to be a cracking uh, few months for uh, Queensbury, no matter what happens. And, of course, TNT Sports now, not a change of name and a change of logo. It's all looking good for you guys. It's all looking very good. TNT, it's going to, it's going to be very explosive. What, what a start, by the way, that we just got this brilliant Telford show and then just the best fight in the world. Errol Spence against Terence Crawford, pretty good start. I was going to ask you about that, but who do you think is going to win on that? Because that is a cracker. Yeah, everyone's saying it's a 50-50 fight and then they just pick Crawford. So um, I, I, I'm picking Crawford. We've gone for Spence. Really? Okay. Yeah, just I think he might... That I know that, that has gone for that. But So, good. Maybe it is a 50-50, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think Spence is going to really you know, see this as his defining moment in his career. So he's going to leave everything in that ring, I think. I think they both will. I think they both will. Uh, very, very intriguing fight. I'll be driving home from Telford on the Saturday night and then hopefully I'll get home in time, to just about in time, and then uh, switch it on. Listen, have a cracking week this week. Really appreciate your time as always, and uh, thank you very much. No worries, my friend.